This presentation is on Chapter 11, Digestive System, Understand Procedure Coding and Work Text, 4th edition. So when we're talking about our digestive system, um, and we've all had ANP, midterm, and so forth, um, we are looking at the uh, different body areas of the lips, the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, intestines, rectum, anus. But we're also going to include with that the accessory structures of the liver, the biliary tract, the pancreas, the abdomen, peritoneum, and omentum. So the procedures that we're going to cover for uh, reporting codes are going to be procedures performed on those different body areas which make up are the components of the digestive system. If you would please make sure you pull out your coding manual uh, and flip over to the section for digestive system. That's following the ones we covered on, in our last class with the humic and lymphatic and the mediastinum and the diaphragm. The next section in our coding manual will be your digestive system. And of course, you got your coding guidelines as, with, as it is with all of your uh, sections. If you notice on the first page, starting that section for the digestive system, um, it starts off with that of the lips. All right, so all our procedures in this section is going to be um, for the lips. And we know what the lips uh, are. And this is going to include the vermilion, which is that pinkish border of our lips. Uh, under this section of lips, you have your, it starts off with your excision, excision procedures. Um, that will be your biopsies um, and things like that. Resections all fall under your excision section for your lips. And following that, you have your repair section, and this is where you have what we call your tylo, tyloplasty. All right, that falls under this section. Um, you need to know the type of deformity that they are correcting. Um, your repairs can be partial, complete, unilateral, bilateral uh, repairs. And if you're looking in your coding manual, you can see that reflected uh, in that section. You also may need to know whether they perform their rhinoplasty or not. It may make a difference in this code um, that you are going to report. All right. Um, then it, it ends up there in your other procedure section. You have an unlisted procedure code 40799. Now, after your lip, it goes to the vestibule, the vestibule of the mouth. Um, that's starting off with your code 40800. Um, and um, here that includes your mucosal tissue and your submucosal tissue of your lips and your cheeks. That's what uh, the components that make up the vestibule of your mouth. And so our procedures are on that um, portion. You start off with your incision, and in your incision section, that's where you have your drainages of your abscess and your cysts. You have a removal of a foreign body and an incision on um, what we call your frenum. Okay? On the, from, from your incision, we go to your excision. And your destruction code, um, here is where your biopsy is going to be located. Um, and these codes are going to be differentiated by the, um, oh, I'm jumping into the repair. I'm reading too fast, too late. So, ascension destruction, that's your biopsy, your ascension, your destruction of lesions, and then your repair code are the ones that are going to be differentiated by the type of repair um, completed. So you see here, um, you got a laceration closure and a vestibuloplasty there. Um, and it, it's uh, differentiated by the different sections in which that procedure uh, was taking place. And then it follows up with the other procedure code for your unlisted uh, procedure. Okay. Now, from your vestibule, if you flip over in your coding manual, 
It takes you to the tongue and floor of the mouth. Um, that's on your code 4100, and that's your incision incision section. In your textbook, it tells you you need to be familiar with the terms lingual and sublingual, because if you're looking in your coding manual, you see the usage of that term um, under that tongue and floor section. So lingual means tongue. Sublingual means under the tongue. All right. And then frenum, we just uh, made reference to that term. Uh, and that is that connection between the tongue and the floor of the mouth. So looking at your um, different procedures for tongue and floor, it starts off with your incision um, code here. And you, you can notice right off if you're looking in your uh, manual, it's separated by intraoral and extraoral incisions. And we we are incising our abscesses, our cysts, and our hematomas here, um, and it's differentiated by the area of the tongue or the floor of the mouth that's being um, treated here. So if you're looking in your coding and you see where it says sublingual, superficial, submandibular space, so therefore we can see um, how that's true there. Um, then in your code four one zero. One nine is so for needle placement, catheter placements, and so forth, and devices. Um, that's what that code there is going to be for. Now, from your incision, we go to our ex excision code for the tongue and the floor of the mouth. That's again your biopsies, excision of lesions. Here, you got your glossectomy um, located in, in this section, and they're either partial or complete, um, removal of the tongue, and then you got tracheostomy. Uh, procedures that are portion or parts of some of these codes, for example, like in your 41145. If you're noticing each section that we're going through, we just it's a repetition of these same procedures on different body areas. That's all it is. So as we go along, we can get faster and faster because we know what an incision is, we know what a repair is, or excision, and so forth. We're just in a different spot in the, on the body. All right, so that's your incision. We got three repair codes for your tongue and floor of the mouth. Um, and here you see uh, laceration repairs, um, and it's based on what portion um, of the tongue that we're uh, looking at. So in your book, it tells you it's differentiated by size of the laceration and uh, repair and the site of the repair. And we see that reflected. Um, in your other procedure section, um, you have a couple things going on here. Um, it's usually a, comp a compilation of different codes that are not falling in any of the other sections. So you got sutures of the tongue here. Um, you got ablation, phrenoplasty here um, as well, and unlisted procedure code, is, which includes part of that section there. Now, once we leave the tongue and the floor of the mouth, um, the next section in our coding manual, we see dental alve alveolar structures, dental, alve dental alveolar structures. Very tongue tied. There's a lot of complex terms here. Um, and so basically, that all that's talking about is your gums and your alveolus, right? And the alveolus is that place where that tooth sits there in your gum. So we got procedures on these structures here. Um, your procedures start with your incision codes. You have three here. Um, you got your drainages of your drainage of your abscess and your cysts and your hematomas. Then you got removal of foreign body. Um, and that removal of your foreign body is going to either be from your soft tissue or bone. So that's how that um, is differentiated. From your incision, you go to excision and destruction of your dental alveolar structures. You got a couple things that's falling here. That's your gingivectomies. Um, your operculectomy is here. Decision of lesions and tumors. Um, alveolectomy is in here, and destruction of a lesion is found um, in that section. Then you have another procedure uh, section code there that's starting off with your 41870. Um, you got grafting here, you got gingoplasty or alveoloplasty, and the unlisted procedure that's falling under your other procedure codes. Okay. 
And I got a little ahead of myself. Those are those uh, I was just speaking of for your dental alveolar structures. Now, moving on to the next side, is, it goes to your palate and your uvula. Um, and your palate, basically, is the roof of your mouth and that um, um, uvula is that little thing that hangs from the back of your throat there. Um, little cone shaped mask that your book calls it. Um, that's your uvula. So you got some procedures. Um, all those structures. You got one incision code for abscess on your palate or your uvula. Um, and then you have you have um, your incision and destruction procedures next. That's your incision, your lesions, your biopsy, um, your your um, uvulectomies, resections, and so forth. Destruction of lesions. Um, that all falls under your incision and destruction. No, nothing. Um, different there. Um, and then you go to your repair codes for your palate and, and your uvula. That's your laceration repairs, your palatoplasty. You have palate lengthening as well here, repair of fistulas here as well. And then you have one code on your other procedure code, which is an unlisted code. Um, one thing, if I back up just a little bit there in your repair section that I, I really do need to um, mention is when you're coding in that um, section. Your book tells you that they, the codes are differentiated um, by whether a closure was completed. Um, and that's in, I'm sorry, that's in your excision section because if you look in there, you'll see like four, for example, 42104. Is a incision lesion of palate uvula without closure. Then one, and then in your 42107 has a local flap closure. So you need to uh, figure out from your documentation whether um, there was a closure um, or not. All right. If you go on from your palate and uvula, it takes us to our salivary salivary glands and our ducts. All right, and here we have three pairs of salivary glands. Um, this is back in A and P. Your parotid, your sublingual, and your submandibular um, gland. Um, here, so you got procedures um, on these glands. Um, you got incision. That's where abscesses that occur there. Um, and if you notice, they uh, you have simple and complicated. You got um, a cyolithotomy. It's hard to say. Cyolithotomy. Um, that's also in this section as well. From there, you have um, your incision. That's where your biopsies are going to be. Um, your incision or tumors uh, will fall in there. You also have a mock superiorization code that falls under your incision section um, for your salivary glands and ducts. Repair codes here. Um, you have a plastic repair with your salivary duct, and you got a par parotid duct diversion. Um, whether it's one gland, both glands, with ligation of both glands, so far. You got closures on the, your other procedures, because from repair, you go to other procedures. You got injections, closures, dilations, and you have unlisted procedure codes. It's really Again, nothing out of the ordinary there. All right, so from there, we're going to go to your pharynx, your adenoid, and your tonsil. Okay, so what is your pharynx? A and P, throat. Pharynx is another way to say um, throat. And then you have, uh, in, again, in this section, your, your um, adenoid. Um, and then you have your tonsils. And um, adenoids are nothing but tonsils um, as well. So this, in this section here, you have incision. In this, for them, you got three codes. And for your incision of your abscesses here, then you got excision and destruction codes for your removal of the foreign body. You got tonsil, your tonsillectomy uh, will be found here. Adenoidectomy is also found under your incision and destruction. 
radical resection, a pharyngectomy is also here, all your ectomies, destruction of lesions, same thing, just on fairness, adenoids and tonsils. Okay. Um the codes for your tonsillectomy and your adenoidectomy. Um if you notice here, um that's writing your code four two eight two zero and a couple more right below it. You see it's by age. That's something we can point out there. Um, they got them differentiated by age. Um, also, something else you need to know is, according to your textbook here, it letting you know that most of these codes are um, bilateral. And so you only need to um, use uh, modify 50 unless it says it's unilateral. So most of these are going to be bilateral, meaning we won't um, have need for using the modifier 50 for the most part. All right, our repair codes, you got three codes here for your fairness, adenoids, and tonsil, suture, pharyngoplasties here, and a pharyngoesophageal repair. Then you have your other procedure codes. You have a pharyngostomy um, under here, and you got hemorrhages um, under this other procedure section as well. All right, so from that, you want to go to your esophagus. All right, and under your esophagus, this starts off with code 43020. Um, and um, it starts off with your um, incision code. And under there you have your esophagotomy. Um, you have your crackle pharyngeal myotomy um, here on the incision. Um, under excision, you have your excision coat. You have your for your incision of your lesions. You got your esophagectomy um, here as well. Um, and as you notice, you see um, under your esophagotomy, you got total or near total complete uh, tracts of esophagotomy. You also got partial esophagectomy. All right, so you need to pay attention to that. You got diver diverticulectomy, uh, diverticulectomy. Oh my goodness, sorry. Di diverticulectomy, diverticulectomy. Um, also falling under your uh, excision section. These words are something else. Um, from there, under esophagus, you got your endoscopy um, codes or endoscopy procedures. Um, so with, when you have an endoscopy procedure um, for your esophagus, where well, you have an esophagoscopy, right? And, and just like your other endoscopy procedures, you can have diagnostic or surgical uh, endoscopic procedures. All right. Conscious sedation is included in most of these procedures here. Um, if this endoscopic procedure turns into an open procedure, your book tells you you're going to have to report modifier um, 58. Now, in this section um, for your endoscopy for your esophagus, there's quite a few codes. Um, it's probably a couple of pages devoted to that in your um, coding manual. And um, so what's going on here is they take that endoscope and they move it down through your esophagus. And so depending on where they end up, um, that will be how they term, term how they will term that procedure. So for example here, um, What what like for example um your code four three two three three that's called esophageal gastro duodenoscopy right and basically what that's telling you is that they took that endoscope and went from the esophagus into the stomach and then into the duodenum and maybe part of the jejunum and then we're gonna call that an esophageal gastro duodenoscopy right. 
So it's based on where that uh, scope ended up, okay? And so as you flip them through, you see a little picture of that on the code four three um two three five. It gives you a nice picture of how that scope is all the way down there in your duodenum and how it goes through the stomach. That's a good visualization. Um uh, all right, and if you go even further into this section, like I said, it's a large little section here. Uh, if you look at in your code range there for your uh, 43270, 43260, I think that's what I'm looking for. Hold on, so many here. No, I'm looking for, yeah, your 43, no, that's 43259, and then 43260. You got an endoscopic uh, retrograde cholangiopancreatography, which is also easier way to say that as the ERCT. I think we might have watched, well, the video, there, I have a video on that, so I have a link for you to look at that. Um, so it's an endoscopic retrograde cholangeal pancreatography, ERCP. So, and we know cholangeal, uh, when we're talking about uh, your cholangeal, we're talking about bile duct, right? So basically, this is a radiographic exam of your bile duct using some contrast medium. That's basically what's going on. I'm um, here called ERCP. Um, okay. They can have other procedures that they complete during that ERCP, um, like uh, inserting a tube or stent. They can be doing some biopsies, some ablations, or something like that. Um, if they use a separate approach for these other procedures, then we have to use Modifier 51. All right. You also have there um, under. Start with your 43279 for your software. That's your lap, laparoscopy um, procedures, which is a scope, kind of like an endoscope that they use to complete the uh, procedures. And you see some pictures of that there. Like um, 43280 laparoscopic fundoplasty. Okay. Um, there's some nice pictures there. Um, and then from there you got your repair section. That's starting with your code 43300. Um, and so you got your esophageal plasty um, here uh, under that uh, section. Fundal plasties are also here. Okay, under your repair. Um, and so basically here in this section you're going to need to know the approach. All right, abdominal, cervical, or thoracic. So if you look in there, you can see there where they have a transthoracic approach. You can see that um, apparently in in that section as you look through it. Like for example, your code four three three four zero, uh, four three three four one. Um, you see where they those different types of approaches are coming um, into play. Alright, um, you also going to have differentiation to occur um, based on different procedures that they're performing in addition um, to the esophageal plasty. Alright, um, like fistulas, repair of fistulas or something of that are hernia or something like that. Alright, um, then you go to the uh, manipulation, okay? And under your manipulation, you got dilation procedures um, that are occurring under there. And basically, manipulation is they are manipulating, are maneuvering something by hand. And dilation means they're stretching something open. 
So you got procedures there for that. And then you have your um, two codes on your other procedure code, one of them being your unlisted procedure. Okay. From there, from the esophagus, then we move on to the stomach. So we're making our way through this digestive um, tract. Um, under your stomach, it starts off uh, with your incision type procedures. That's your code starts with the 43500. You got your gastrotomy here. You got your pylor. Myotomy um, here as well. And then it moves on to your excision codes, and um, that's your gastrectomy, um, your biopsies, your gastric, uh, your uh, vagotomy is here as well. And then from there, you got your laparoscopy. Uh, under your laparoscopy for your stomach, this is where your gastric bypass surgeries will be um, coded from, and uh, there will be a video link for that one. Uh, for your viewing pleasure as well. And so we know that gastric bypasses, um, when they um, go in and take some of a uh, part of that um, small, uh, they take part of that stomach out uh, so that people can uh, lose weight. Um, and so we were cold from that section. You also have some other cold um, in that uh, section dealing with implementation or placement of electrodes, uh, transsexual vagus, uh, vagus nerves, uh, gastro gastrostomy without construction of a gastric tube. Your book just kind of lists it out. And then also has an unlisted code for that section. Now from your laparoscopy would be your introduction um, code. Um, you got two placements in here. Um, under your um, introduction uh, section, you got intubation and, uh, and aspiration also located here. And so with those tubes, they, they are placement, they got changing, repositioning of the tubes, all those types of things fall under your introduction uh, section. It tells you a notation here in your textbook that um, if this is in reference to your critical care and you report critical care code, then you're not going to code from um, this section. All right, so those don't go together. Now, from there, we just talked about your gastro bypass, and we got some other bariatric um, type surgeries um, going on here. Um, and with the bariatric surgery, that's like your lap bands and stuff uh, of that nature. Um, and it tells you here, codes are differentiated by the components of the procedure completed in relationship to that device. All right? So again, you got placement, revision, removal of the device, those types of um, coding will be done there. From there, you got your other procedures um, where you got a pyloroplasty here. Um, what else? You got gastro jejunostomy. Um, you got gastro restrictor procedures. Falling under your other procedure code. Again, it's just a combination of codes that's not fitting anywhere else. Um, over here, 43846 is a picture of a gastric bypass, how that um, works out. A good visual there. Um, if you're looking at, look up that code, you can see that in your um, code and manual. All right. From your stomach, we go to intestines. So we got a bunch of procedures here for our intestines. Um, that's your, you got your large intestine, your small intestine, and of course, of course part of your large intestine uh, will include your colon, and it has the four parts for your colon. That's all um, good and well. That's your, all your A and P um, stuff. So we're not going to really spend time uh, reviewing that. You can review that on your own if you need to. Um, but it starts off with our incision code for our intestines. You got enteral elysis, a procedure that's um, moving in, uh, removing those intestinal adhesions. That's going to be under your incision um, section. You got enterotomy here. You got your colotomies here as well. All falling under your um, incision duodenotomy. Um, and then from there we go to excision. Um, and under your excision code for your intestines, 
Um, it talks about anastomosis. Um, and if you're looking down, like for example, 44110, it uses that terminology and it reminds you that anastomosis means that we're, that we're surgically connecting two structures. Right? You should already, that should be a familiar term um, to you already. Um, so under, under this section, you got your biopsies, your interectomies are uh, under here, your enteral enterostomy, enter, right? Ooh, I'm having a hard time today. You also have a couple of codes following your decision for um, allotransplantation, right? So you got the donor code, your back bench, and your recipient code. Those are the three sections every time we're dealing with, uh, those three components every time we're dealing with transplantation, whether it be your heart, your lung. And so um, now we're doing uh, the allotransplantation for, uh, in your intestines. Okay, so those, that's the same um, principle. So that's nothing should be nothing new um, for you there. All right. So from your excision, when well, I failed to mention, colectomies are also in your excision code. You got a partial colectomy and a total colectomy. All right, and then you got other procedures that. Um, they sometimes are performing with those codes that makes a difference as well. But from so now from um, your excision, uh, we're going to go to your laparoscopy, All right? And you know what your laparoscopy is. We already talked about that. So this is your laparoscopy for your intestine. And then from your laparoscopy, you got your endoscopy, right? You got, um, well, let's go back to laparoscopy. Let me say one thing about that. A lot of times with your laparoscopic uh, procedures, while they're performing that, they will do some extensive removal of adhesions, but um, most time the insurance is not going to cover that because they're going to consider that to be part of the overall procedure. However, if it takes uh, a uh, inordinate amount of time, then the physician can document document that in the medical record, and may you may or may not there's a chance you could get some reimbursement for that. Your book was uh, I want to bring that out. Your book was mentioning that about your laparoscopy, all right? So moving on, your interostomy. Um, you have your interostomy for your ileostomies, your genostomies, or your colostomy procedures. All right. And so basically, when you code in that session, you just need to know what part of the intestine we're, we're doing this procedure on. And then from there, you have your endoscopy uh, for your small intestine and your stoma. That's starting your code off there with your four four three. Six zero. All right, a stoma, surgical opening between a part of the intestine and the outside surfaces of the skin of the abdomen. That's what a stoma um, is. Um, and so, basically, when you're looking under there, you'll see them doing these endoscopies, and they have some additional uh, procedures that they may perform here. Um, you know, like a biopsy, removal form body, so forth. So you need to realize uh, what you're dealing with there because that determines the code selection, right? You got ileoscopies, you know, you put the scopy on the end um, of that body part that we're scoping. So that's nothing new here. From there, you have your introduction. You got one code there, your 44500, introduction alone, gastrointestinal tube. All right, but it tells you that if you got an NG tube, um, then you're going to use the code 43752. So you're not going to use the code from here. So it's not referring uh, to nasal or or gastric tube here. Okay. Um, 
We do have a video on your um, GI tube. Um, and we have a video for your um, for your PEG tube and your NG tube, nasal gastro tube. We have videos for it. Um, and basically, your your PEG tube, your GI tube, they tend to be more long term, whereas your um, nasal gastric tubes are a more short term um, type situations. When they place it, you better place it in there to kind of assist. Uh, patients when they're not eating well or things like that, they use all the to deliver some medication or something like that. So again, your PEG tubes tend to be more long term. Your nasal gastric tubes are more short term, and, and also your nasal gastric tubes sometimes you hear that called a Miller Abbott, right? Miller Abbott. So if you look at four four five zero zero, it'll tell you that, for example, Miller Abbott, right? And that's a separate procedure code as well. I'm just uh, mentioning, wanting to mention that means, you know, of course, if it, it, it can't be, if you're going to use that code, it, it can't be in conjunction with the larger procedure. All right. Um, from there, you got your repair code. You have um, suturing going on here, a closure. Um, going on here as well, so suturing and closures of the stulas and things of the like. You got placation procedure as well um, going on in that section. All right, under your um, other procedure codes, you have um, codes for back bench work. Like, for example, your 44715. Preparation of donor, 44705. All right. So basically, this is looking at like a transplant, those three components. So that they're falling there under this um, other procedure section. You got um, your, a little small section here called your Mikhail's diverticulum and the mesentery. Um, you got a fission for your um, Mikhail's diverticulum. Um, and you got these lesions for your mesentery. You got one suture code, that's your 44850 for your mesentery. And then you got an unlisted procedure code, 44899, very small section there. All right, after that, we move to our appendix. Okay? And everybody knows they always tell you, you know, they really don't know what the real purpose for your appendix is, and, and, um, but we have appendix and we can have procedures on that a common one. We got um, for, with, under our appendix, um, we got one code for your incision, a 44900 abscess for your appendix. But a very common procedure falls in our excision section, that's your appendectomy. All right. Now, it has an interesting note there under your 44950. It says incidental appendectomy during intra-abdominal surgery does not usually warrant separate identification if necessary to report at modifier 52. So basically, if they're doing some type of abdominal uh, surgery and they happen to do an appendectomy, they're trying to tell you that that's usually not reported. If they, it needs to be, we're going to use modifier 52. So that's an interesting um, note. You got 44960 for ruptured appendix with abscess, that's on your incision. Um, and then from there you have a lap, two codes for laparoscopy. One is an unlisted code, and that makes up your appendix section. All right, and from there you go to your rectum. That starts your code 45000. Um, um, and here it Start with your incision procedures. There are three for abscesses, um, drains of abscesses, and then your excision codes. You got your biopsies, you got your proctectomies, right? Anorectal myomectomy, right? Yeah, excision um, in this section, right? And from it, your excision code, then you go to destruction code for rectal tumors. You got a, a nice picture there, 
7134-5172 showing the tumor and they're going to use a cautery instrument to extract that um, tumor from the rectum. Okay. Um, then you have your endoscopy, your endoscopy codes. Um, that's your scope, right? And you got a couple of notes there in front of those um, codes. And so based on using the scope, you can have a proctosigmatoscopy. You can have a sigmatoscopy, a colonoscopy. All right, we'll all fall under that, those scope type procedures. All right. And you have a couple of pages on that. So like 45378 eight, shows a picture of a colonoscopy. Very interesting. Laparoscopy will be um, your next section under um, your rectum. Um, and then you have from there, it's nothing different. You got, it's broken down into excision, laparoscopic excisions, and laparoscopic repairs. Then you have your regular repair codes, your proctoplasty here, um, closures of fistulas are uh, here under your um, repair codes. And then you have a manipulation section for your reduction, dilations, and removals of foreign body, um, dilation of your sphincters, that type of thing going on there. Um, and then you have two codes for other procedures. You got an interrectal exam, and then you got an unlisted procedure code, 45999. All right, from your rectum, we go to the anus. We're getting close to the end, huh? So um, with your anus, you have a lot going on here with hemorrhoids, because that's where they usually occur. So you have some cold here um, dealing with hemorrhoids. Now your anus section starts off um, with a couple of incision colds, removal of an anal fetum, abscess, um, incision and drainages. Here you got um, also you have some hemorrhoid codes. And you also have hemorrhoid codes going from in your incision and you also got hemorrhoid codes in your excision. Now when we're talking about hemorrhoids, there are different types. Your book um, your book brings that out. And so a lot of your codes here so these procedures are going to be based on complications that people are having with hemorrhoids. Um, so you can have internal, external, combined, or mixed hemorrhoids. Um, and some types of complications, you can have a prolapse hemorrhoid, thrombose, hemorrhoid strangulated, ulcerated hemorrhoids. Your book does a great job of defining each um, one of those, but you got to pay attention to what's going on in terms of complications and types. Uh, of hemorrhoids and any other factors that um, play into that and that affect your code assignment, right? And so we talked about your incisions here, um, and then your excisions, like a hemorrhoidectomy, right? Incision of a hemorrhoid. Um, you have here, and you see some of the different types of things going on, like a fissure. Um, a fistula, removal of fistula, removal of fissure that comes into play with your hemorrhoid. Um, you got a picture here, 46250-46262 of an internal prolapse hemorrhoid column. I'm not showing you how that kind of goes. All right, and from there, um, you have your introduction. Uh, for under your anus section, um, and you have two codes there, one for inject, injection and one for a chemo denervation for your anal sphincter. Then you got endoscopy for your anus, uh, so that's an anoscopy, right, and it's divided out uh, with biopsy, with dilation, with removal, with different little procedures that's going to differentiate the way that code um, is going to be taken care of. Um, from there, you have your repair um, of your for your anus. You got anoplasties. Um, you got sphincteroplasties. 
here. Tear up the stools and the anus. So we have different things going on in terms of repair. Hemorrhoid or pixie. Collapse. Alright. Um, and then you have destruction codes. Destruction of lesions in your anus. Different uh, ways. So that you see if you look there at your code 46900 uh, and you see that they have it divided out based on how they're going to do the destruction. It's a cryosurgery, laser, so forth. Destruction of hemorrhoids is also here. Fissures. Destruction of a fissure. And then you got an unlisted procedure code under your other procedure section. That, that closes out your procedures on the anus. And from there we go to some of your accessory um, structures in your digestive system starting with your liver. Alright. Um, liver, it, you have your incision section for your liver. You have a hepatot hepatotomy that falls in there and a laparotomy. Hepatotomy and a laparotomy that falls under um, your liver in the incision procedure section. Um, under excision, um, you have your biopsies and your hepatectomy. And then you have a section for liver transplantation with those three components that we talked about. Your donor, your back bands, and your recipient code. So that's not, nothing new there. Um, repair for your liver. You got mycophilization going on. Hemorrhages. Repair of hemorrhages is also um, there. And then you got your laparoscopy. You got three laparoscopy codes um, for your liver. And then your other procedure codes. You got ablation there and an unlisted procedure code. From there, you go to your biliary tract. Um, your biliary tract is basically um, your liver, your gallbladder, and your bile ducts. And in this section, you got to know the approach to um, select your code. Um, you start off with your incision code. You got a hepatocotomy in here, a cholidocotomy here, a sphincterotomy, and a cholecystotomy. All falling under your incision for your biliary tract. You got your introduction codes, percutaneous cholecystostomy. Oh my goodness! Um, is under that section. You got injection procedures, introduction, introducing of catheters. Um, and a revision of a transhepatic tube all uh, falls in the introduction uh, section. You got uh, endoscopy, of course, surgical endoscopy always includes your diagnostic. That's always stays the same. You got um, your laparoscopy, so your endoscopies and laparoscopy. Your excision codes. That's your cholecystectomies. Um, you got um, stone extraction in that section. You got a um, excision, of, excision of tumors and cysts. Then from there, we got repair codes. And you see your anastomosis. Now you got to pay close attention to these anastomosis because they're throwing them in a lot of different sections, so you have to pay attention. Um, to the um, the anastomosis pr procedures, and your book tells you that um, you got reconstructions under your repair as well, and then you got your unlisted procedure codes um, for your biliary tract under uh, four seven nine nine nine. That takes us to the pancreas. That starts with code four eight. Zero zero zero, um, and you have three incision codes: placement of drains for pancreatitis and removal of a calculus. And you got your ex excision. That's your biopsies, your resections, your pancreatectomy. Um, there, you got subtotal, total pancreatectomy. 
Um, your introduction, it just has one add-on code. That's your 48400 for injection procedures. Then you go to uh, the repair section. You got my supervisation. You got your pancreatography um, here in your repair. And then you got a pancreas, a pancreas transplantation. Three components, your donor, back bench, and your recipient, same thing. And then you got your unlisted procedure code and then your other procedure section. Very redundant, but it should be helpful in terms of being very familiar with what, how you need the code. The final section is for your abdomen, your peritoneum, and your omentum. Um, and with that, you have your incision um, section. You got exploratory laparotomy here. You got drainage or abscesses. Drainages of lymphocytes and appearance and pieces all fall in a lavage under your incision. Now, on your excision destruction codes, you got your biopsies, your destruction of tumors, your um, umbilectomies, and your omentectomies on your excision section. Then you have um, your laparoscopy for for this section. And then your introduction, revision, and removal. Under there, you got removal of foreign bodies. You got injection procedures, um, placement of devices are uh, in here. Removal of catheters, insertions of a shunt, revisions, legations, removals of shunt, all falling under your introduction, revision, and removal um, section of coding. You got a conversion of a tube uh, because if you notice in your um, once we uh, once you look when you're looking at that introduction revision removal it has it broken up into parts so you have an initial placement where they insert tube um, under that and then they convert the tube under conversion and then they replace uh, tubes under replacement then they got mechanical removal of obstructive material section. So they broke that down. And then from there they have a repair um, section. And with your hernia repairs, you got a hernioplasty, herniography, and a herniotomy. And you got different types of hernia. So when you code in there, you got to know um, the type of hernia. You got inguinal, you got indirect inguinal, direct inguinal, hiatal, hernia, incisional hernia, strangulated hernia, ventral hernia, and again you can uh, read those definitions to those different types uh, of hernias in your textbook. I'm trying to see if they have any pictures. I don't think they have any pictures in the coding manual of um, your, your code. So you got to know your type of hernia and then you also need to know whether it's initial or recurrent hernia. All right, and in some of these codes, you need to know the patient's age and a, the clinical presentation of the hernia in order to code it. And when we talk about clinical pre presentation, we're saying is it a reducible, is it incarcerated, or is it a strangulated hernia? All right, um, and if you notice as well, that repair section, if you flip one page over, you'll see it has a small section for a laparoscopy uh, method uh, for the, the, this, uh, these procedures. Starting with your code 49650, so laparoscopic repairs. Um, then you got one code for a suture, secondary of abdominal wall for evisceration or dehiscence, that's 49900. And then you, you close out with your other procedures. Um, section and, and you see a lot of something about flaps, old mental and free old mental flaps, and then you got an unlisted procedure that closes out at 49999. All right, this is going to conclude our digestive system presentation on chapter 11.